I'm Alex Hunt and we're here in one of the UK's greenest cities, Brighton. Electing the first Green MP, several green flag parks and boasting an award-winning eco-friendly bus service, if you want to be green, Brighton's definitely the place to be. I've been working in eco-refurbishment in this city for the last five years, helping people to make their homes more energy efficient. By reducing their heat loss and their electricity consumption, they're able to reduce their carbon footprint and save money. In December 2012, Brighton Hove Council, working with Brighton Hove 1010, the Green Building Partnership and the Low Carbon Trust, won a government grant to run a scheme in the city called the Green Deal Pioneer Places. This scheme was set up to show people how to improve the energy efficiency of their homes and properties. It's also to promote the Green Deal, which is the national scheme to help people pay for these improvements through savings on their energy bills. As part of the Green Deal Pioneer Places, we were able to give 100 homes in Brighton and Hove a free energy assessment. From these 100 homes, we selected 10 houses to receive up to £10,000 home energy efficiency improvements for free. We followed the story of three of these houses from start to finish. Here are their stories. I'm Sarah. I'm Rory. My name's Erin. My name's Terry Conway. And we've got two boys as well that live here, which are Zach and Miles. And Miles is 18 months and Zach's five. I live here with my partner Katie and our 11-month-old daughter Maisie. My mother's mantra was waste not, want not. And it's something that I've tried to, to make our children aware of. Yeah, we're very conscious, things need to change. The main reason that we bought this house was because we really like the garden. We've got a very big garden. Um, and it's just perfect for having young children, you know, they've got a big area to play in and we grow vegetables and that kind of thing. I am aware with the windows and the walls and it was built in 1870 that we hemorrhage a great deal of heat so we can get it nice and warm but we pay a lot of money to keep those temperatures. Seeing the Eco Hope open houses that are uh, here is great for, for thinking about what can be done in similar type of properties and uh, with regard to, to warming it up. It's nothing worse than being in a cold house and we did, did feel it was very cold despite central heat and everything. Our livelihoods are so different having a young child. We have a lot more expenses than we used to in terms of looking after her. We were really nervous about the boiler throughout the entire winter knowing that if suddenly it just broke down, that we'd be hard pressed to find additional money, 3,000 or whatever it costs, to ensure that our house was warm. The previous owner was very much into, he was an electrical engineer, but there's, there's a huge amount of electrics, but, but too much and, to, you know, and lots of little nice spotlights, but that, that aren't very energy efficient, so they will be changed. They suggested another way of, of doing the loft insulation where they actually put the insulation down and then they board over it so that you can still use the loft as kind of storage, which is brilliant, which is one of the things that they're going to be doing as well, isn't it, when they come? There's obviously things that we're very uh, aware of that, you know, improve double glazing and, and things like that. But because most of the houses in this area have loft extensions, so loft insulation isn't viable. So um, external wall insulation is, is a major way. They gave us some brochures to show houses um, that are just hemorrhaging heat out of them and before and after pictures once they have the render that the heat stays in the house. We will be the only house that's rendered on the road so um, hopefully it's good advertising for them and that it's something that people in similar Victorian homes look to do to keep their energy costs down. I'm, I'm hoping that to, to make the central heating redundant to a large extent. To know that we'll have a peace of mind that we've got state-of-the-art boiler that's heating our house efficiently that we will have these render skins on the front and back of the house that's keeping all the heat in, um, just that this house will be more efficient and be saving us money. It would be nice to just get everything done and out of the way and fingers crossed it won't take too long to get the work done and, and finished. Right here we are at Cuthbert Road, the start of EWI works in the area. Um, as you can see behind us, the scaffold is now up and the plumber's in, prepping for the EWI. And all the plumbing has to be removed, the insulation is 100 mil, and the plumbing has to come off the walls at 120 mil to allow for a 10 mil render system after the insulation is on. It'll all uh, be good for, for Brighton area. We've made good progress this morning. We've been taking up the old insulation, which has gone past its sell-by date. So we thought it'd be best to take out and renew all of it in total. So today's progress will generally be taking out the old 
insulation and replacing it with new. Well, here we have a sample of what's going onto the wall, which is the start of the um, insulation. This is what we call phenolic insulation. The best of the best, really, of the insulation. As you probably hear in the background, the guys are fitting onto the wall, but this is what it looks like before the render system goes on. This is the naked insulation. So the scaffold's up, the pink foamy stuff has been put on the front and back of the house to insulate it. It's been really interesting to see the process. So, from yesterday, we've replaced the insulation with 100mm of earth wall. Now today, we'll be fitting the loft zone, which is a structured system which enables you to build up the insulation even more. It's all going to schedule. Yeah, it's a little warm up here and uh, probably going to get a little bit warmer as the day goes on, as we generate a lot of heat because we work so hard. <laughs> They're just doing the loft insulation at the moment. I think they're about halfway, three quarters of the way through, and they're hoping to be finished probably tomorrow or Friday. Um, and it's all gone really well. We haven't really had any problems. It's all been, you know, very quick, very simple. And yeah, very, very good. Well, basically what we've done, we've removed the old commie boiler that was in the house um, and replaced it with one of these new gas saver energy efficient boilers. These new A rated energy boilers store the heat from the flue which was then used to preheat the mains water coming in for more efficient uh, use of the domestic hot water. This saves on gas consumption and should save a lot of energy with the gas. So the first week just completed. I think we were both quite nervous of how it might be having a bunch of strangers in the house but everybody's just been fantastic. Right so here we are week two. All now the insulation has been installed and the guys are now putting on the beads they go around the windows, put all the straight edges back into the building before we put the mesh coat on. So as you can see we've completed the first Green Deal loft zone system. On the top here we have a chipboard covering. Underneath that we've got 300 millimetres of Knauf loft insulation made from recycled glass which brings it up to the correct level. Now we've put the decking down, the guys are starting to put the loft contents back in. It's going to be filled right up, the load won't be a problem, and happy days. So all the old lights have been taken out now and all the holes filled in, ready for the ceiling to be made good and the strip light of four LED lights will be put in uh, sometime next week. I'm really pleased about it because uh, it, it, it was a major pain and um, you know it's just too, too costly whereas the, just having the four LEDs would be a lot more efficient and um, aesthetically pleasing, hopefully. Okay, so today we've got the team coming in to do the cavity wall insulation. Um, we've got all of the scaffolding up around the outside so that they've got access to the whole upstairs. They think it's going to take a day and then as far as I'm aware they're going to drill some small holes around the outside which is just going to go into the pug between the bricks um, and then they just pop a little scope in there and they just basically fill it with foam just to block up the cavity in effect just to stop all of the cold air coming in and out and they'll just do that all the way around the house and then afterwards they'll come along and, and plug back up the, the holes in the pug um, just to make sure that it's all sound again. All the work's virtually complete and as you can see it's like a brand new house. The only difference that you'd notice is that it's a little bit fatter and the windows are a little bit deeper. Other than that it it's, looks brand new. There's a few little things out the front need to be done that's going to be, remain up so that the house looks exactly the same as it did before the external wall insulation was put on. So work's finished at all three properties now. I'm off to see the homeowners to see how it all went. So we're here in the bathroom where the new boiler's been fitted. So Erin, what's the difference between this boiler and your old one? Well Alex, with the old one, it was really old and rattly and made not very nice noises. We also had to top it up every morning with water and be, to be able to shower. So the biggest difference for Katie and I is that we don't have to worry anymore about this piece of kit that was we always thought was about to break down at any minute. We worried every winter 
if the heat was going to go and now we just have peace of mind. So we're coming in and we've got our new LED lights in here. Yeah, I think what you have to appreciate is what it was like before when there was about 10 individual spotlights that were forever blowing, so this is a lot better. And I said that if you're going to do one area for light, and please do the kitchen because it was such a complicated mess that had been left behind. I'm really pleased that we've now got LEDs in here and, um, you know, that should last a long time and um, have a very little energy use. So here we are in the finished loft with the new deck and uh, all your new storage space. So how did all the fitting go? Um, yeah, it was it was fantastic. It was done so quickly. It was like four days of, of kind of solidly being up here. Um, but we're just so pleased with the results. We wanted the loft insulation done, but it's something that we could never have had done because of losing the storage. And I mean, as you can see, we've, we've lost no storage and we've, we've actually ended up gaining more because well, they've overboarded over the beams. It's, it's just absolutely fantastic. We've, yeah, we're really, really pleased with it. So the biggest piece of the work here, Terry, was the uh, external wall insulation. And I know that the, um, all of it's been finished now. Um, we've just got to get the scaffolding down. Um, waiting for a bit of decorations on the front. So how do you feel about your new insulated house? Well, we're, we're, we're looking forward to reaping the full benefits of it in winter, particularly the rear of the house, because when it's blowing a gale off the sea, it, you know, you can just, you know, it takes the full impact of, of, of severe weather. So, um, you know, come, come the winter, we'll, we'll be nice and even warmer. Start to finish went really smoothly. Um, it was interesting to see all the layers that they put on to make the house nice and insulated. Um, and it feels like the house now has this big warm coat on it that's keeping all the energy and warmth inside the house. So as you've got external wall insulation, obviously it stands out proud of the other houses down the road. Have you had any comments from your friends and family or any of your neighbours? It's been really entertaining for us when the front of the house has been done. The amount of people that have stopped and stared has been phenomenal. If you look from the side, you can see it's, going to, it's a little bit prouder than the rest of the terrace, but if you're looking from the front, you wouldn't notice any difference. People have come around and seen the boiler have been like, oh my goodness, that's a really big boiler, and I've been trying to explain to them you know, why it's so big and what it does and stuff. People that we've spoken to about the Green Deal have been really positive and are really surprised at the amount that you can actually get done on the Green Deal and you know, what, what it can do. Everybody's really interested and very keen to come to the open house and to find out more. So having gone through the Pioneer Places project, um, have you got any advice you would give to any householders thinking about using the Green Deal? I would recommend them to take part in it because obviously they're, they're going to gain if they intend to be in a house for a number of years, they're going to, going to be a lot of savings and of course it's disruptive when you're having any building work done in the house, it creates you know dust and things like that but, but those sort of things are easily remedied and, and you know, long term the, the, the cost, not just financially but environmentally, uh, are going to be very productive. When you weigh up the amount of disruption compared to the savings that you're going to make, you know, a couple of weeks disruption isn't really much to give up, is it? Um, and hopefully, you know, because of this we're going to be very warm this winter, very definitely worth it. If you're considering it at all, I say just go for it because it's such a good thing to do for the environment, it's a good thing to do for your own bank book. We're going to save lots of money and our house looks awesome.